Hey, Creative Mom, Camilla here from Creative Mom's Decant. So I have my sublimation printer on and we're gonna do some sublimating. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, let's dive in. So today we are gonna be making silhouette sublimation mug or you could do a tumbler either one is just as easy we're going to do a mug so i've been really into these lately and they're super fun the first thing you want to do is go to projects and grab your template so mug or tumbler or whatever you're using And this, it's your design here, and then you choose the ounces of your mug here, and then click Customize. And it loads this amazing template. This would be for the Cricut 12 ounce mug. If you bought a tumbler from a third party, you'll either have to measure and create this, or you will need to, you know, maybe it came with an SVG and you'll need to download it in. So if you're using a Cricut mug, they're in there. Whoops, you don't want to do that. The first thing you want to do with these is select it all and group. All right, so then we are going to make this one for a fisherman. So we're going to go to images and you're going to type in silhouette. Fisherman, I have an extra E in there, don't I? And any, almost anything, I mean, I'm going to show you some when we get there, but volleyball, golf, farmer, city person, um, expecting mom, there's all kinds of silhouette options in here. So then you just want to play around with what you want and definitely a baseball cap. And then I'm going to probably want some fish as well. So, let's see, we may put in fish alone. So let's go fish. And with sublimation, it's really easy to do detailed ones, which is amazing and I love that. You can also change them to be whatever color you want and we'll show that. I'm gonna grab this one. And then I think I'm gonna grab, I might grab these. We might play with some black and gray. So let's put all this in and see where I'm at. So the first thing you wanna do is click off of your items, then you can move them each separately. Design Space sends them all in as one, which is silly. And the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and change everything to black and to sublimation. So I'm gonna leave the fish alone because I might add some grays to those, but everything else I want sublimation, I'm gonna go ahead and change it. And then you wanna start shrinking. And I think they're super fun if you get the feet on the very ground, you know, get a foot on the ground on the very bottom line. And I sometimes even will decide to slice. So that's what I'm gonna do with the boat here. I'm going to take some of the water, but not all of it, and decide where I want to slice it off. So I'm going to grab a shape. If you watch my videos, you'll know I love to slice. It's how you get things how you want them and not how they come. So I just unlocked this square, and I'm going to stretch it over the parts that I don't want. Click my shift key, click my boat fisherman, and assuming it's just those two, oh, I have him as, we, it has to be the same operation. So this would need to be changed back to a basic cut. Oh, and he needs attached. I see what we did wrong. He was several layers, one moment. So weld him together, which we should have already done. And now we can line it this back up where we wanted it and select both of these and slice. They have to be one layer. So sometimes you may have to attach something first. And then I can get rid of all these pieces we don't want. And I'm gonna shrink it just a little and place this in there. And I think I'm gonna like that in the center. 
and again right on the bottom and now I'm gonna bring this guy in and his little path with water is what I'm gonna put on the bottom here alright so I love this I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stretch this one out just a little and get these close to the same size here all right, now we want to ungroup these fish. So I'm going to ungroup. And let's just look at one of them welded together. So I don't think I'm going to like that as much. I think what we should do is change up some of the colors. So to do that, I'm going to find where he's at. And then I'm going to go for a gray color. And again figure out which one it highlights over here in the panel when you select them all which is really helpful I think I want the back one to be black nope not this one I want this one to be another gray let's go lighter gray and then the third layer here to be the black black now I can change all of him to sublimation basic cut down to standard and oh I love it now let's put this in here and I think I'm going to do the same thing with this one and then I'm going to meet you over on the other side so we can show you how I wrap this up and get them heated see you in a minute all right so I decided another fish did not work but I grabbed a line and attached it to my boater so once you're done what I like to do is go ahead and delete the help marks so if your item whoops undo if your item had those red marks on them we're going to ungroup and we're going to get rid of those we no longer need them now because we're not using infusible ink we do need to go ahead and delete our this part all right it was just there to guide us so it was a helper shape now you want to select all of these and attach them so that they all print together i will tell you if you push your edges on these they will not work out very well um, you won't be able to attach because design space has limitations so just keep keep that in mind and you don't really want to push your edges you want some space so I actually now am looking at this and I'm going to detach so you have to remember that this side and this side will kind of line up especially on tumblers on the mug that you have the handle in between but if this was a tumbler I would want to flip this guy the other way just because I think it would be more visually appealing and you may have to move a few things around but again this is a mug that we're doing today so I'm going to go ahead and attach these together and then you go to make it and remember when you're printing to your sublimation printer we mirror you could use infusible ink for this too just grab some black infusible ink and then we're going to go to continue and it's going to tell me my machine's not hooked up because I don't use my machine on these so I'm just going to X out and ignore it. I only want it to print. So I'm going to send to my printer. I'm printing on my Epson 3710 that I converted. I do not want bleed for this project. I do want to use my system dialog. I always want to use my system dialog because I want to change the settings to a high quality. And it won't save that in design space. So you always have to do that manually. And I'm going to click print. So I'll meet you on my printer side so that we can heat these mugs. All right, so the design is printed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my mug press on. And I've got my Cricut 12 ounce mugs. They come in a pack of two. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of these out. I also have masking tape, a lint roller, and rubbing alcohol. That's basically all you need. You could do a convection oven. I'm gonna tell you, I love my mug press. I just, I do. I even do these, the silhouette designs, um, tumblers in my mug press, because it's easy. All right, so I opened up, and even though it's brand new and I just now opened it, I am going to take my rubbing alcohol to the side here and spray all around. I'm gonna slide this up so I don't mess it up. And then I'm gonna take this and completely wipe the whole thing and I do this before I cut my design so this has time to dry so and then if I'm thinking about it I stick my lint roller in it 
so that I don't forget to lint brush it. All right, I'm gonna grab scissors. So Design Space cuts or prints these lovely boxes out, right? They're not so lovely. They're kind of annoying. I'm going to cut the bottom one as exact, but without getting any of the ink as I can. I could have used my paper cutter, but you wanna leave somewhat of a bottom because it will help you get it onto your mug. All right, and then I'm gonna cut the sides here. Same thing, trying to cut relatively straight. And the top, and the top doesn't matter so much. It's that bottom line that I wanna keep crisp so that I can keep it flat and where I want it. All right, so I have all the black lines out of the way. I'm gonna set this out of the way too. And then I'm gonna take my lint brush and I'm gonna go all the way around it and probably twice. Anything that's on here will make funky lines once you heat it, so you don't want that. So make sure your mugs are clean. All right, and then line this up. So I'm gonna lay it down, and I know my design is just about perfect as far as size, so now I just wanna make sure my bottom stays as level to the bottom of the cup as physically possible. And then my heat tape, which I keep forgetting I'm almost out here. And I'm gonna heat tape the paper to the mug, whoops, without moving it, and not on top of our design. And so I go ahead and get one side down. Now I'm gonna grab the other side. All right, and then to this side, and same thing, getting making sure I'm following along that bottom edge so that my boat and everything sits flat, right where I planned for it all to sit. All right. And then I, I as snug as I can, and I'm on my last piece of tape here, of course, I'm gonna use, make it two. I'm gonna grab the top again and pull, and then the same thing on the bottom or even the middle, wherever's easiest that you're not getting on your design with the heat tape. And here I almost did on the other side, so I'm gonna cut it. And then I take the masking tape And I go all the way around. You can do cheap Dollar, dollar Tree masking tape, works just fine. And I'm gonna pull snug and all the way around and fold that masking tape under so that it seals really nice. Sometimes I even do a couple strips just to hold that bottom down where I want it, depending on how much tape was there versus how much paper. But you definitely want it to be snug. So I'm gonna rip this end off and get that all nice and snug. And then I'm gonna do one more tape over the top half. And then I'm gonna take you over to my heat press so that we can put this in our mug press. I didn't quite get a long enough strip. Just grab another piece. It can overlap a little bit. It will be just fine. A Little bit of overlap on the masking tape is fine. All right, so it's all down and all sealed and it's time to put it in our press. All right, so we're gonna grab our mug. We're just gonna simply drop it in and shut the lid. So now we just wait. So it's done. I like these for removing hide items out of my convection oven, but for a mug, the handle is cool and I just take it straight to my heat pad. So we're gonna let that cool completely. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my mug press off and then we will open it up and reveal our image in just a few minutes. But for you, in no time. See you in a second. All right, it's cool enough. It's not cool, but it's cool enough. So we just remove all this tape. 
And sometimes the end of the masking tape can get a little sticky and leave a sticky residue on your project. Don't worry about it. It washes off. So you just take it, soap and water, and it washes right off. No issues. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, look, it's so fun. Love it. Woo, a little warm. <laughs> a little warm, but I love it. These are super fun. I wanted, I grabbed two to show you here. I made a baseball one. So just using those Design Space Silhouette images is super fun. And I made this volleyball one. Whoop, let me show you. The volleyball one. They're just really fun. And I hope you learned something fun today. Thank you so much for joining Creative Moms. Have a joyful day. Bye-bye.